You know, this is a very deceptive game that we play. DC figure collecting. You have your hunters, you have your geeks, you have your DC dorks, and then you have me, the Lord of the Underground. again to the necro zoo i am bones and in this one let's go ahead and add one more figure to my mcfarlane dc multiverse collection now today we will take a look at nightfall batman now this is a figure that everybody is anticipating uh, <laughs> kind of funny every time a new Batman comes out people always say that this is the best Batman ever so it kind of makes you wonder what eventually we will get to <laughs> because if this isn't the best Batman ever eventually we're gonna get to the final form of McFarlane Batman <laughs> that he releases now there's a couple things I have been interested to check out with this figure uh, really excited to take a look at him. Now he does look pretty traumatized in the packaging, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at him. But first he does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stand. Now of course these are not really needed, but sometimes they do come in useful. He also comes with his data file card. On the front, you do have some source material from the comics. The way Batman was actually portrayed in the whole storyline. Not too sure which image this comes from, but pretty cool to get some cool comic artwork. On the back, you do have some information. Pretty cool. We'll go ahead and add this to the collection. Now, he does come with some accessories. He comes with one blue batarang now um this batarang it's kind of small which is pretty interesting because mcfarlane usually makes them a little bit extra large and now this one looks you know uh, it's not necessarily too small I don't really like the blue color i would actually prefer black but it is what it is pretty cool to add one more different type of battle rank to the armory now it kind of reminds me of the black one that came with the hush batman but as you can see they are different sizes they do have the same kind of sculpt work with the scallops so it kind of looks more like a bat wing but they are different and the hush one is basically almost two times larger pretty cool now we do want to have him with a batarang so we'll hold on to this he does come with two alternate hands now these are the gripping hands or open hands he does come with two fists in the packaging and these are going to be pretty useful to hold on to the batarang and also maybe a grapnel gun even though he does not come with one but if you've been collecting mcfarlane long enough and DC figures in general you should have tons of versions you could use for figure photography or posing or whatever displays you would like to do now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the actual figure now tons of people have been hyped about this figure they've been anticipating his release I have just been thinking since I was recently done with the hush Batman which was <laughs> by far one of my favorite batman ever released i mean the execution was almost perfect there was a little bit of flaws but he's really a great figure to display and to take photos with and i even made a black custom version and now this of course is the next level so let's go ahead and look at him he looks pretty nice lighter tone of gray 
as you know, there could be different tones, a darker tone like the blue hush or a lighter tone like the black hush. But this one even seems a little bit lighter than both. But as I always say, do not fear. That just means that McFarlane could one day <laughs> do a, a variant version of this with a darker gray, which would be pretty nice. But he looks really good. He has tons of sculpt work. I could see that right away. This, I could tell you for sure, is a new, completely different sculpt. There is nothing on here reused. Everything is new. This is a completely new figure. And, and you know, that's something that we've come to expect from McFarlane. But I also think it's something that sometimes we get spoiled and we want like new sculpts each time. So when he does reuse a body, it kind of, you know, gets people mad when they should just be glad that we're getting more figures. But of course, I wouldn't mind getting a couple more Batman using this body mold. I'll tell you one thing. First impressions right off the bat, he looks really proportioned well. Now, McFarlane gets a lot of flack for proportions, although I think it has a lot to do with the figures being more of like portrayals of comic versions. So when you do that, a lot of the times, the proportions can be kind of off because you're trying to like kind of make the figure more dramatic than it actually is. But for appealing to the eyes, this is probably the best Batman <laughs> that has ever been released. It looks kind of reminiscent of the speeding bullets, but we'll do some comparisons towards the end of the video to check that out. Pretty nice, you got the emblem. You got the sculpted out gloves, which everybody wanted. You got, I mean, it's hitting all the points. So this by far should be a, a, an awesome figure that you <laughs> you better buy two or three of these if you're, you know, really collecting McFarlane like the way I do, because this is gonna more than likely be a hard figure to find towards the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the head sculpt. Um, one thing that I, I thought that I saw, like on, you know, different promo pics and stuff, was that his like exposed mouth was like kind of dark and now that i have it in hand it it is a little bit darker than like a regular skin tone but yeah it's a little bit dark here around the mouth but you do got nice sculpt work you got like wrinkles in the face the lips and the chin are nicely sculpted out they even have a little bit a little bit of brushing in there too you know, bring out to bring out the different shadows around the face and the, you know, underneath the, the lips and underneath the nose. So pretty awesome. The cowl is nicely sculpted. And I know a lot of people were saying that these ears should be like super long, but they're not short. Definitely. Uh, they're not even medium. They're kind of long. So I'd say they're pretty much like hitting that sweet spot of where you want, you want like a classic version of Batman to be and that's basically what I'm thinking you know by looking at this figure is this is what a word I don't really like to use classic but this is basically the best classic Batman that we've received do have a little bit of wash around the eyes and just a great head sculpt for a you know traditional Batman hey you know I even think this is possible to do a black and gray version that would look really sweet. So the possibilities are endless. It's going to be awesome to see what McFarlane does having this sculpted Batman in his tool belt. Let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation. Can look down. Pretty good. Look down over the city. Um, I don't know why, but he looks up really high. Do not be afraid, there is a double ball joint inside here. So if you push, you can even hear the rubber like flexing, but he could look up really high. No need to mod this guy. It's perfect the way it comes in the package. This looks really good. You do have right to left. And of course you could tilt his head for some attitude. Awesome, awesome head sculpt different than any other of the Batmans we've received but of course uniquely special in his own way going down let's take a look at that emblem mine's pretty clean I mean very faint little like kind of blurry little p 
pieces in between the black and the and the yellow, but nothing like big that I would have to repaint it or anything like that. Awesome, awesome. And then the way it is uh, embossed and raised and it is a different part than the chest is just something that we basically come to expect from McFarlane. And when he just paints on emblems, it kind of <laughs> like irks us that really collect this line because we know that he's more of a proponent of sculpting out all of the symbols. Oh, that's pretty nice. Then you go down, you got a completely different belt than any of the other belts. This one's more of a capsule belt and the trunks have their own little like wrinkles and texture. So pretty much a unique figure that's <laughs> gonna be awesome to add to the collection. Let's go ahead and take a look at the waist articulation. You do have side to side, which is standard for McFarlane. Even the upper chest actually hits the belt on each side. You have that full tilt-to-whirl at the waist, giving you an awesome range. You got a lower waist swivel, upper chest swivel. You can twist them, get them in some action poses. Now, something I'm scared to look at. Let's look at the crunch. Surprisingly, he does have a pretty nice crunch. I mean, it's sheer millimeters away from that upper chest part hitting the belt. And I'll show you right here by collapsing down and then it almost hits the belt. So big improvement. We're really getting there with McFarlane and the articulation. So that's an awesome, awesome addition to the ab crunches with McFarlane. And of course he could lean back no problem and no gappage there, just a clean, like tight fitting upper chest to the lower abdomen. It's really smooth and has nice articulation. So <laughs> uh, I'm scared that I might end up saying this is a perfect 10 out of 10. I, I don't think so. I wanna, you know, be honest with this one. So let's keep going. Let's take a look at the shoulder joints. Of course you have those socket and bushing McFarland shoulders that kind of act as a faux butterfly and you do get a lot of range, but really that ring is there just to cover the gap between the shoulder and the chest. You do have some up and down, front to back, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. Um, now here's one thing is this one's a little bit choppy. That elbow sticks out a little bit. I think even the Hush Batman was cleaner than this one. But it's not a big negative for me. I will say that it has smooth uh, articulation, not really tight, uh, not really loose as well. Straightening them out. You got, this is pretty cool because what you have here is no texture at all on the suit. Basically like a smooth skin, but you can still see the musculature. Then you go down into the gauntlets. Now the gauntlets do have a very like micro texture it's really hard to to like see at first but once you get the figure up close you can really see it and it actually matches with the trunks you got that little fine texture that just gives it some some life where it's not just you know plastic and plastic this one actually has like a texture to it you got those gauntlet blades that are classic batman and then you go down into the wrist now one thing i'll say that wrist joint that is not a traditional ball, it is a sculpted out wrist joint, actually has wrinkles and to make it look like fabric. And it cuts a beautiful silhouette from the forearm down into the wrist and into the fist. You do get that McFarlane four ways of articulation, which is hinge and swivel and far superior to a lot of other companies' wrist joints especially now that they are sculpted out ball joints. Kind of a high-end feel with these sculpted out ball joints. Really getting your, <laughs> your money's worth for a $20 figure. Awesome, awesome work by McFarlane. Let's take a look at the other side. You basically have the same thing. And let's pop off this fist. Pretty simple, pretty smooth changing of the hand and then you do have the open hand just pops right on now even that is a big upgrade no more battling to get the 
hands to interchange that's really smooth and of course now he's ready to hold on to any accessories now let's check out the t-pose he got a pretty clean classic t-pose um you can move up a little bit more almost a y pose and then definitely you can move his arms above his head great range great articulation i mean this is basically a culmination of these last three years where these little things were getting tweaked these little things were getting you know worked on and this is what <laughs> your patience has brought you oh awesome definitive classic batman let's go ahead and take a look at the thighs now there's basically there should be only a couple of other reviews and i think uh, one of the reviewers just does not know well one doesn't know articulation at all so he doesn't do it but the other one just just didn't really know what you know how to do this articulation for mcfarland figures but as you know me i've been doing it since the first figure so i do have it pretty much down pat and he, i think he was crying about the thigh cuts again saying that he wants thigh cuts now why would you break up this beautiful thigh scope you could see the musculature you could see like little wrinkles in the suit why would you chop that up and make it to where you basically have uh, unhuman like <laughs> a range of motion because humans aren't made for their feet to swivel around like that but what you do have is some awesome awesome thigh swivel now with this thigh swivel that is already in the hips and mind you i did not warm this up usually if they're kind of tight and you warm them up you could kind of break them free and get a, get that swivel in there but what you could do is move the boot from side to side without having that hideous disgusting thigh cut and you could still get that range at the foot from side to side oh but you can't move his foot like pointed facing backward well why would you want to does your foot face the other way so this is perfect you got that full range of movement in the hips now another thing he did was he didn't want to kick up he said that that's it that's all you're getting from forward kick which is not true because anybody that follows me knows that the trunks are made of soft rubber for a specific purpose and that is so you can kick up so now you see that he kicks up really high you could even use the hip swivel to move his boots straight you know so it could be parallel with the thug's face and kicks up you know karate kick high and then of course he could kick back as well and of course once again the trunks move out of the way don't do not be afraid they do bend and flex and when you put them back they go back to their original position no harm done now you can still cock out the knee and he does have that sweet mcfarland hip swivel double jointed knees now those look clean those are better than the the hush batman so hush batman has better elbows but these knees are are clean they look really good straighten them out you have up and down at the ankle right to left rocker and toe articulation now before we go let's take a complete look at this lower body i mean man <laughs> not much to say except this is beautiful work even in the knee hinges like where the kneecaps are you could have little wrinkles and you could actually see his kneecap bones which is something i've never seen before uh pretty much changing the action figure game with the sculpt work you got the points at the boots and then once again the boots have the same little micro micro texture that the trunks and the and the gauntlets have so it's all matching perfectly you want to look at the way the calf goes down through the ankle into the boot it's a perfect silhouette these sculpted out ball joints I, I dare say these are even better than Moffex or SH figure arts because they're not balls they're actually sculpted out to make a beautiful transition 
down into the foot and then you flex that foot and it has great articulation man this one's this one's a pretty good figure i'll give you that much mcfarlane now take a look at it from the bottom no tread and no identifying marks moving up the back pretty simple sculpt work for the back of the legs now the knee hinges actually have sculpt work in them which is i'm a big fan of and then the back of the utility belt they did go with the capsules all the way around and then you have that nice back batman sculpt man great figure now look at this cape <laughs> they were saying you know oh this should have been a cloth cape the flash figures came with a cloth cape blah, blah, blah. you know what this cape is awesome look at this you could basically make it into a ball because it's not hard plastic it's pretty soft and then it just pops back into its original form and this cape has the same little texture that all the rest of the costume has so it all matches together and all flows together and ties itself in man beautiful beautiful work on the cape and it's sad because i prefer plastic capes it's just something that i feel like it's just the way they decided to execute the figure and i'm fine with that so moving up the back the back of the cowl transitions nicely into that neck piece and into the back of the head so pretty awesome figure just look at him he looks great now we can get some batarangs in here i mean i don't really like the blue one that's for some reason i just don't it's kind of small and then it you can't differentiate it from his glove because they're the same color now the hush black one looks really good but it's a tad bit large uh, I have this one from rebirth which I thought might look good um, just the shape of it doesn't allow him to really hold it nicely and once again it's kind of wide and then I have this classic Mattel Batarang from the DC Universe classics and this one is just perfect I mean <laughs> it just fits right in his hand the black really contrasts with the blue and it actually matches up with the black on the emblem to give it some kind of flow ah this is the perfect batarang to have with this figure so if you want one that i think is the best get one of these black mattel batarangs to fit with this figure pretty nice and then of course if you've been collecting dc figures long enough then you should have tons of grapnel guns laying around now i actually have this old mattel dc universe classics grapnel gun it has a separated piece that actually has a, a thread on it and you can wind that up there's like a wheel and then it fits right on top there just wanted to see how it would look in his hand um it looks pretty good i mean it's kind of large but all the little gears and little little like parts to it really make it stand out and like like i said before this thing detaches so you could you know it looks pretty good like that on its own as well so that's one way you could go but we do have this one from rebirth that i actually repainted a little bit now that one it does fit in his hand kind of spreads his hand a little bit but once again it looks pretty good that gold really works well with the yellow on his suit so yeah that's a nice one but i think i'm going to revert back to my batman 1000 grapnel gun with the bat grapple at the end this one just fits <laughs> i don't know why this one fits perfectly with a lot of figures just the size of it and the composition of it like the parts it has a little like gas container here in the front just looks classic and really works with this batman so that's how i'm liking him with this grapnel gun looks really good now of course you could take some pictures with him he's really poseable tons of fun to play with 
I mean, you can even get them in like crouching fighting poses. The cape really helps a lot to stabilize them, but also I would have to guess that he's not hard to stand at all, as you can see. I mean, I've been messing with him this whole time and I just decided to stand him and he stands really well. There you go, no problems. Everything is coming together. Uh, slight things that I don't like about it, I would say not too much. I mean, there's not too much that I don't like. I would just have to say the last thing to check is the scale. We know how that is with McFarlane. Um, before we do that, let's bring out some comparisons. Now, I do have the actual Nightfall DC Universe Classics Batman. Now, the gray is a little darker. The blue is a little lighter. Uh, beautiful figure. Uh, this is, you know, in co of course, in my DC Universe Classics collection. But I thought there was one that looked even better. And this is the, the Superpowers Batman from Mattel. And that one looks... <laughs> that gray matches with this gray, but now the blue is even lighter. Uh, beautiful figures. I love these figures. You know, everybody knows I have the complete... DC Universe Classics Collection twice, loose and mint in box. So you can't really... There's very few people that could actually come at me with DC Universe Classics because I basically have about 95% of everything that they ever released. Now for scale purposes, this is the one I really wanted to see him next to and that is the Rebirth Batman. The reason being because he was always like the shortest Batman that McFarlane made. And he is actually slightly shorter than this Nightfall Batman. Actually a pretty good amount. So he's going to stay being the shortest Batman. He's uh, barely taller than the Mattel ones. So, I mean, each Batman can actually be used on its own, you know, with different displayed figures. It just depends what the purposes are and that is the beauty of having so many Batman that you don't have to actually have to be stuck with one size or version or or style you can actually move around and have tons of Batmans to choose from uh, another one I wanted to bring in was I don't have any problems putting them next to my custom rebirth Joker that I actually repainted to look more as a classic Joker now these actually look really good together. It looks great. Awesome, awesome Joker figure there. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in the Speeding Bullets because this is the one that reminded me the most of this one. And actually they are very similar. The height is exactly the same. The Speeding Bullets is actually wider and you could tell he's a completely different sculpt and book as the Nightfall one, but in his own way, he's an awesome Batman figure, even though he is actually a uh, Superman <laughs> underneath that cowl. It is Kal-El. And then I don't have to beg people to get me one. I actually have two that are still in box in my storage. And that, and that is the Nightfall Azrael. This is a, this is a perfect pairing right here. This is Jean-Paul Valet and this is Bruce as Batman so I mean this is what we're looking for now I do have two of these the reason being because I actually want to eventually customize one if McFarlane never decides to give us a repainted version of this but for right now I'll hold on to that you know extra one that I have but awesome comparison there and then finally the <laughs> The whole time, this is what I wanted to see was the difference between the Hush Batman since I was like so enthralled with him and he's like basically the one of the best Batman figures I've ever seen just coming straight from the pages of the comics into figure form. Uh, not too much taller than him. I mean, it's a real slight. I'd have to say it even millimeters. So I definitely was proved wrong because I thought this guy was going to be super, super short. And in fact, he may end up being everybody's definitive Batman. And then finally, just to put a little bit of fear in Batman, let's go ahead and bring out my boy Bane. And yeah, 
he just looks down on that puny, <laughs> that puny Nightfall Batman. Uh, I actually love this because even though in Nightfall Bane is like not really any larger than than Bruce, maybe when he when he venoms out, he grows a little bit. But this is what everybody that imagines Bane, the you know general public, this is how they imagine Bane like a big, you know, uh, juiced up villain. And I'm I'm fine with this. I'm happy with this. This is gonna make some very awesome figure photography and they they look good together because bane is definitely a very dangerous man and it's nice to see we're finally filling out our nightfall section of our collection but anyways guys awesome figure he's gonna be awesome on the shelf he's gonna be awesome for customizing he's gonna be awesome for figure photography just an awesome awesome figure I would have to say definitely up there, probably a 9 out of 10, if not edging into that perfect figure category. We might be looking at figure of the year here already with this Nightfall Batman. But you guys keep hunting out there, keep collecting, keep customizing, and I will see you on the next one. Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.